The San Antonio airport getting its first direct flight to Europe starting next spring. A direct flight to Frankfurt, Germany. And local leaders hope more are added soon. Yeah, that's a big goal of the plans for the San Antonio Airport project. We explain what's coming for the airport and why even infrequent flyers might want to pay attention. The seventh largest city in the country is starting to act its size. And size has everything to do with it. The San Antonio Airport is about to get bigger. It's a whole host of projects, with the biggest one being the new terminal building. A third terminal at San Antonio International, with capacity for 17 more gates. There's Terminal A, Terminal B, and next to it would be number three. The size of it would be approximately 850,000 square feet, which is actually more than the Terminal A and Terminal B we currently have combined. But it's not just about more passengers and more planes. Anybody that's been in San Antonio for the last 30 to 40 years has been privy to the debate about where our airport should be. San Antonio International sits at the crossroads of Highway 281 and Loop 410, not far from both the bustle of the city and neighborhoods. Think about any major city in the United States where their airport is located. Very few of them do you fly actually into the heart of the city and your location is convenient. Convenient, but landlocked. One of the main questions that they wanted the master plan to ask was, is our current location the right location now and into the future? And the answer simply was yes. We get a lot of traffic from south, so the further north we would move an airport would have an impact. An impact to a city trying to attract more, not less. More business, higher education, and in turn, higher paying jobs. In a lot of industries in 2023, it's not work from home, it's work from anywhere. Think about USAA. They have offices all over the world. They need connectivity to their office in Charlotte, their office in Phoenix, their office in London, right? If they want to grow here, they need to be able to connect to satellite offices. The mission of Greater SATX is to help companies in San Antonio grow here and stay here and recruit new ones. The airport is directly related to propelling our economic trajectory. We know we need greater nonstop connectivity and we need capacity. And that's been a knock on the San Antonio airport for years. A lack of nonstop flights, whether you're traveling for business or pleasure. The new terminal, according to those behind this project, is a way to get those flights. San Antonio is the largest city in the country without transatlantic service, and we are aiming to change that. Um, but that's key for us. Think London, think Frankfurt. Uh, we also need greater connectivity to Toronto, primarily for our cybersecurity organizations here. And then Mexico is a key market, not just because of proximity, but because of our manufacturing sector here. So Querétaro is a, is a key destination for us from a business perspective. Domestically, we absolutely need a nonstop to DCA. I mean, DCA is a key airport for us. DC is a key market for us. That's the only site that it literally takes an act of Congress to create, and so we're working through that process right now. That's because of something called the Perimeter Rule, which dates back to 1966. It restricts nonstop flights to DCA, also known as Reagan National, to within 1,250 miles of that airport. San Antonio is 1,600 miles away. Houston and Dallas are within that perimeter and have direct flights to Reagan. An exception was made for Austin, so it has a non-stop to DCA, but not us. Military City USA, home to 80,000 active duty military personnel and hundreds of thousands of veterans. Think about NSA being here, uh, the Air Force's cybersecurity headquarters being here in San Antonio, aviation, manufacturing, all of the different federal contractors. Greater SATX is part of the Capital Access Alliance, along with numerous other organizations and companies trying to push Congress to change that perimeter rule. Other direct flights the city wants to get or get more of? Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, Boston, Chicago, and the Bay Area in California. But this isn't necessarily a project, build it and they will come, right? We That's have right. to get airlines on board to make that connection happen. It is a very delicate dance that we do with the airlines because ultimately it's the airlines themselves that pay for these facilities through the fees that they pay when they take off and land from San Antonio International. 
let's not just wait for airlines to come to us. And so we are having these conversations where we are telling the San Antonio story with the airport and with Visit San Antonio, and we're in active conversations, specifically not just about gate capacity, but about nonstop routes. The new terminal is the main airport project, but it's not the only one. A ground loading terminal is also in the works. That means passengers board the plane outside. And the only difference is instead of walking through a jet bridge, you load on the ground through a set of stairs. It's, it can be faster. And there are certain carriers, ultra low cost carriers that like that model. The city is also building a ground transportation center, a separate building where passengers can go to catch an Uber, a Lyft, a taxi or a bus. That will be across from the new terminal. What that allows us to do is take that traffic off the curbs in the front roads and allows uh, you know more free flow for passenger traffic. Don't expect the new parts of the airport to look like the old. The design aims to include some San Antonio signatures. A lot of times airports, you know, the curb, you go straight into the building. We're going to build a paseo. Think of it as kind of a dry creek, if you will, with some natural features that will be offset from the building to the curb. That way you get to introduce plants, wildlife, bridge effects. Plus an outdoor courtyard for passengers once they get past security. Construction is set to start in 2024 with liftoff for the new terminal in 2028. The entire project is estimated to cost $2.5 billion, which will be paid for, the mayor says, through airline fees and federal grants. What happens if we lose out on the money, if we don't win those grants? We won't lose out on the money, and we have great support and partnership from the federal authorities. Through this project, the partnership between the airport and the economy is one the city hopes will take off. We can't point at the airport as a problem. They can't point to us as a problem. We are working together to be a solution. There's not a site anywhere in the world, once this is all developed, that we won't be able to reach. You can scan this QR code to take you to the KSAT Explains page where you can find all of our KSAT Explains coverage and a place to submit your own ideas as well. We'll be right back. Around America now, the Supreme Court declining to take up a case that argues former President Trump is ineligible to run again. The case was filed by Republican presidential candidate John Anthony Castro. Castro points to the 14th Amendment, which he argues should disqualify Donald Trump from serving in office because of the January 6th riots. It bans office holders from future elections if they aid or engage in an insurrection. The Supreme Court shutting down that argument without comment or recorded vote. Trump denies wrongdoing, by the way, in the Capitol riot. A last minute deal between Mack Trucks and the United Auto Workers Union narrowly averted a strike. The UAW announced the 11th hour tentative contract agreement just nine minutes before the union's contract was set to expire. The 3,900 union members must now ratify that deal for the contract to go into effect and put the risk of a strike to rest. This comes as the UAW continues its strikes against General Motors, Ford and Stellantis formerly known as Fiat Chrysler. Look outside with live cam this evening. A little break in the clouds there. They were nice to see today. Some people getting some rain, but the best part is we have more to talk about. Adam. Yeah, will that be is what we saw today kind of what we're going to see the rest of the week? No, I think it's going to pick up okay. and actually we'll see some better, more meaningful rain and possibly even disruptive for some outdoor plans by Thursday in particular. Right now, most of the action, Southern Atascosa County, and this is moving into Frio County, about to hit the I-35 corridor or in Frio County. As for temperatures, not as bad. We did make it above 90 today, 92 in town, but right now 84 at the airport officially. Stinson on the south side, 81, Converse 82, 79 in Hot Noon, upper 70s, most of the hill country. Lingering sprinkles and showers coming to an end over the next hour, hour and a half, and then overall partly to mostly cloudy the rest of the night. We also, I did some digging. It looks like we'll have the coolest morning in quite some time. I'll give you that date and how long it's been in just a bit with the cold front that hits on Thursday. 
A victim in a dog attack that happened nearly one month ago has died. 47-year-old Paul Anthony Striegel died from his injuries after being attacked by a dog at his home on Heidelberg Street. SAPD says the dog involved has been euthanized, the owner has been cited, and a hearing is expected in municipal court. In tonight's San Antonio Police investigating a deadly shooting at a West Side apartment complex. The shooting happened around midnight at the Westway Apartments on Calabria Road. Witnesses told officers after the man was shot in the parking lot, two men in hoodies ran away from the area. No word on what led up to the shooting. San Antonio police also investigating an apparent drive by shooting that injured two people. This happened around 11 last night at a home on G Street near Clark Avenue. Officers say someone in a dark sedan shot a man and woman outside the home. At last check, the man was in critical condition and that woman is expected to recover. And Governor Greg Abbott has set a date for a third special session. Lawmakers will return to the Capitol on October 9th. The governor has not officially said what this latest special session will focus on. He has said in the past it will be about public school funding and school vouchers. That's your 60 second recap. Pretty exciting combination of things to talk about in the forecast. Cooler temperatures and some sizable rain chances. These seem significant. Those are two things that we've been without for quite some time. Yes. Adam. Oh yeah, we absolutely have. And with what we endured over the summer and even through September, this is going to be a noticeable change. Now these are the morning low temperatures we're talking about in the days ahead. I'm purposefully blocking this weekend to reveal it for you. So we'll be in the mid 70s to start the day most of this week. By this weekend, temperatures fall off significantly. It's going to take a little bit of time. We know the cold front hits on Thursday, but it's going to take time for that cooler, drier, less humid air to really settle in. It's lagging behind that front quite a bit. Sunday morning, we're forecasting 59 Monday morning, 57 for the low temperature. That's the coolest since May 1st. It's quite a long time ago. Looking at authority radar at the moment, just a little bit of rain left over south of town. This is all slowly coming to an end. I'll put it in motion for you and you'll see how it had higher intensity about an hour ago and now it's starting to fall apart as it heads northward into Atascosa County and even parts of Frio County, Charlotte just getting clipped here, but especially between Dilly and Charlotte, some still noticeable and beneficial rain. We had some pockets of beneficial rain, especially southern Atascosa County, northern McMullen County today, uh, where that Gulf moisture little conveyor belt of moisture just came in and it was nice to see all this rain where you see the greens on the screen. That means a minimum of half an inch. The yellows two inches or more and then the oranges three inches or more. So it's good to see some of that rain south and west of San Antonio. We all need it and we all will have better odds as we get into Thursday. Here's a look at that conveyor belt of activity coming in from the Gulf of Mexico earlier today. Currently, you see these showers stretching northward up the front range of the Rockies. That's because of this big trough, another beautiful trough in our atmosphere in the western U.S. It's digging southward and that trough is going to clip Texas and be enough to help push that cold front through a very slow frontal passage and again, don't expect abrupt changes right away. This isn't going to be one of those fronts where it hits. Oh, you feel it and everything changes. It's going to be a gradual process behind it, but the rainfall potential is looking good, not just for us, but for all of Texas. And we really need rain pretty much everywhere across the state. Of course, I hope we get more than everybody else, but one to two inches, I think, will be a common reading in many rain gauges across our area by Thursday night. 30% chance tomorrow, 40% Wednesday. By Thursday, we're up to 70%, and then Friday morning, a little bit lingering, but I think most of it's gonna be south of Highway 90 throughout uh, Friday morning and into the midday. 84 currently, we had a few sprinkles move through, dew point of 68 degrees, so still very humid outside. That changes by Friday night. Dew points really fall off then behind the front. 78 Bandera of Lost Maples at 72, Bernie Stage 81. And temperatures for the most part, upper 70s to mid 80s, Catula 83, 84 in town. Tomorrow 76 at 7 a.m. By noon we're 86 and a high temperature of 92. So feeling a lot like today and looking a little bit, little bit like today with a mixture of sun and clouds and a few isolated showers popping up periodically. 88 in Bernie tomorrow, Canyon Lake 91, Bulverde 88 degrees in Floresville. 
about 94 for the high temperature. So the weekend is going to be the most noticeable changes. Afternoon highs in the 70s and then those morning temperatures eventually dipping into the 50s. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the lower humidity hits Friday night. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Adam. The buzz coming up next. To the buzz now, if you want to see giant pandas in the U.S., you're running out of time. China is winding down its loans of the endangered animals to U.S. facilities. The National Zoo in Washington says it's returning its three pandas in December. Yeah, the pandas who delighted visitors at the San Diego and Memphis zoos already gone. Soon Zoo Atlanta will have the last giant pandas in the United States. It says these twins will return to China early next year. Their parents will follow a short while later. And who doesn't want to see pandas? They're so cute. At the zoo, they are very cute. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame singer-songwriter Stevie Nicks now has her own Barbie. It is part of Mattel's Barbie music series. The Stevie Barbie includes some of the artist's signature items, her smoky eyes and bangs, ribboned tambourine, and golden moon necklace. Why Stevie Barbie? Why not Barbie Nicks? Barbie Nicks. The look was inspired by the outfit the former Fleetwood the former member of Fleetwood Mac wore on the cover of her band's legendary 1977 album, Rumors. The designer said Nix actually loaned out her signature black dress and boots for reference. The Stevie Barbie available for pre-order for $55. It has already sold out. Apparently, the demand was a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be right back. Check out those changes coming later on this week. Thursday, we'll have some off and on rain. 85 the high. We drop to 83 on Friday. And Friday's generally looking dry. I just think maybe a chance of showers early in the day. Now, the timing of that cold front could change a little bit, so check back for the updates. But this is what we're expecting now. By the weekend, very low humidity and afternoon high temperatures in the 70s. I mean, what do we hang Christmas lights or what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> Thanks for watching the news at 6. See you after the football game tonight.